Hello, I'm Amar Jones and welcome to Caffeine TV, your daily video news brief here to take you through three headline numbers in just three minutes, giving you a different take on everything from housing policy to the Real Housewives. The first number up today is 100. That's the body temperature that will get you extra screenings at ports and airports when you arrive at the United States from other countries. Now, that was announced yesterday by the White House in a move to keep us safe from Ebola and I guess blunt its spread. Well, I'm wondering whether or not it's a feel-good measure because when you arrive in the United States, you may not show signs of a fever. Mr. Duncan, who arrived here and is now fighting for his life against the disease, didn't show any symptoms when he came to the United States. Second thing is that there are no direct flights between the affected areas in West Africa and the U.S. You go through London or you go through Amsterdam and so when they ask you where you came from, you'll say, I came from London. I came from Amsterdam and it'll be hard for them to figure out if that's where you actually originated from in terms of your flight. And the last thing is, and I don't know if you guys remember this, but in the early 2000s during the SARS epidemic, there were people who were popping aspirin before the plane landed in order to mask any possible fevers that they had because nobody wanted to be subjected to extra screenings. And airports are a hot mess and ain't nobody got time to be spending more time in an airport than you have to. And so I wonder if whether than subjecting us to these dubious screenings, um, whether or not the true answer is that the next time that someone arrives at a hospital and says, I just came from Liberia and I'm showing all the signs of Ebola, you don't send them home. The next number up today is 11. That's the number of states where gay marriage can possibly proceed. Given the Supreme Court's uh, decision yesterday to not take up lower court rulings that had said that gay marriage was okay. People who don't want gay marriage had appealed those and the Supreme Court said ain't nobody got time to be hearing those cases and gay marriage can carry on in those states. And not surprisingly, the right wing, even though 60% of Americans are now waking up to the good news that gay marriage can proceed in those states, the right wing is now vowing to fight to the bitter end, saying that this is a ruling that is the end of times and is just the worst thing that ever happened. Well, you can honestly get people to argue anything. There's something called the Flat Earth Society, which believes that the Earth is flat and not round, and that if you go too far, you will fall off of a cliff. So my advice to the right wing is that y'all are on the wrong side of history and you better get on the right side of history or bye Felicia. The last number up today is 18. That's the age of Diti Chan who is a sprinter in India. The New York Times did an article on her because the federation that governs track and field in India has said that she cannot run because she has two high of a level of testosterone and that if she wants to compete, um, she either has to undergo surgery or take pills. Now, as we get better um, at science, the interesting thing is that it's harder to tell biologically the difference between male and female, especially when you use rudimentary things like testosterone and estrogen, which can fluctuate and vary from person to person. And there's no evidence that higher levels of testosterone in women will make them run like Usain Bolt in track and field. And so this is all just questionable. And so my counsel to the Indian Federation is to let this teenage girl run. She was born to run. And don't you guys have better things to do, like perhaps partnering with the Indian government to combat the spasm of rape that has gripped the nation?